mentioned each well known. Jimmy, is that on our Google Secretary plan? Thank you, sir. And this year, we are going to be two minutes. Medical, I mentioned each well known at the last meeting, but I did not see it on this list. It's not on here. So it should be. <laughs> I tell you what, instead of you adding it, Jimmy, you want to get the math on there? Do you mind? If that saves her in the
I make a motion that we accept this from uh, farming to
they have decided that they don't want it. I understand, I understand that uh, the tickets come in on doing this because selling the property because of their mother. I hate that because it's a bad situation. I'm so sorry. But there's so many people that's against this. I'm afraid that also at some point that, that, that the transportation department may not give approval for the turning green. And also, that at some point, the scholar stores are going to end up being um, having a lot of alcohol products in them. I'm sure not at first, but later on. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Ashwell. That's your motion. And do I hear a second from Magister Ashwell? No, no, I
preach, I have asked, I have taught, I have a gazillion times from our biggest plan. So thank you, Lisa. The comprehensive plan states that it is primarily residential or largely residential. And in that uh, in that area. And the utility is excluded from the uh, zoning and so inconsistent, inconsistent at that point with the comprehensive zoning. Can I do um, every explanation she gave was based upon the community and that it was largely residential. So what the point was that because of that that she believes is a conflict with We have a motion and a second. Any questions for discussion? <coughs> Monica, do each of us have to state that? What? State what Master Ashwell just said. That's in her mind. Okay. Yeah.
that takes care of the whole thing up for me. And I want to go ahead and take care of the mouth washing here. Uh, no, it really got me thinking of the mouth washing the people here. <coughs> Magistrates under new business. Number one, presentation of Mount Washington Fire Protection District, the 2013-2014 budget. I know we have Mr. Jarrett here who's on that the wood line. I'm presenting this for the record, Mr. Randall. Magistrates, do you have any questions? Okay, moving on. I want to go ahead and do number two under the business presentation of Fort County Public Library 2013 budget. Anyone here from the library? Okay. I want to present this to the for the record, Ms. Graham. Any questions? Okay. And let me go ahead and take care of Bruce Johnson. Go ahead, come on up here, Honorable.
It'd be around fifteen hundred dollars.
say that they have to draw descriptions? Yeah, I do have to. Oh, okay, about the door? Yeah. Go yeah. oh, ahead. Yeah. Mark, I just want to talk about. Uh, oh. I mean, uh, you got uh, some quotes. A door. Yeah. The, can I can I the, we got some quotes there in front of uh, for some, just like we have here, the page that you push button, the handicap, wireless, and all the time deals to the advantage of the time. Yes, I did. So he's going to put them in the 
back. If you don't have them, I can back up, shut up, and we'll give them to them, and we'll talk to them next week. That's why, that's why I'm giving this look to you. But nobody has anything in front of me. I wasn't aware of this. Right, and we'll just leave it at that. We'll give you the copies and we'll bring it up to the next session. Sounds awesome. That'll work. That'll work. Okay. Three times. I'm good with that. I was not aware that they didn't have them. I didn't turn them in. I apologize. You all didn't get them in the packet last month? Nobody got them in. Oh, if they were good. I guess that's where they were. Last month's packet. Therefore, they're not going to be in this one. Well, wait a minute. We'll bring it up to the next session. Have everybody got that. Actually, I submitted a 2013 14 project for us to AMC because it was a great time that we were making some loans later. I don't know for sure that we put a project list and send it in and told me I'd fly over here so we could see it. Okay, if they were in the last fiscal court, we have packed it there and there. Who was in front of us? Okay, so we won't we won't write a state for making more copies. But yeah, if you don't have the packets, I mean I look at some of these packets and think they look like you don't have it, you don't know what I'm talking about. What's that for? Thank you. 
for energy efficiency and conservation grant slash loan to execute any documents which are deemed necessary by DLG to facilitate this project and to act as the authorized correspondence for the project. Whereas Bullitt County, Kentucky has made an application for an energy efficient and conservation grant loan for a project to be administered by the Kentucky Department for Local Government. Whereas it is necessary that an application for and approval of an energy efficiency and conservation grant loan impose certain obligations and responsibilities on the county. Now, therefore, be it resolved that the fourth day of June 2013, by the fiscal quarter Bullitt County, <coughs> that the uh, county judge executive is hereby authorized to execute and furnish all required documentation, including a memorandum of agreement, as may be required by the DLG for the furtherance of the above reference project, and to act in service as an authorized correspondent for said project. I make a motion that be given the county judge executive or allowing an event or gathering on private or public property 
where persons under the age of 21 possess or consume alcohol regardless of who supplied the alcohol. Because you see, currently, Kentucky law only covers consumption. Social host ordinances give law enforcement a tool to control parties where underage drinking occurs, and they serve as a significant deterrent to the host, to people hosting parties in the first place. Current laws prohibiting furnishing alcohol to minors target the actual supply of alcohol. Social host liability refers to providing the location. So when the police show up at a home party, the adult can argue all day long on the premises and in court that they did not supply the alcohol. It's easy for them to just set it down and we don't know where they got it from. But they cannot argue about the location. The officer will not need to witness the adult handing alcohol to a minor to issue the citation. When social host laws are in place, we feel adults are more aware of personal liability and what it can cost them. We are not about telling parents how to raise their kids, but rather discouraging the potentially dangerous choices people tend to make when under the influence of alcohol and encouraging responsibility and accountability of adults or neighbors, guardians. Though there are many theories as to why teens and young adults choose to drink, parents play the most significant role in whether or not their children will choose to drink before the age of 21. Even our local data supports this. In the KIPP survey that was administered at the beginning of the 2012-2013 school year, in the past our focus has been on retail availability. We go out and we try to see what stores are going to sell our minors alcohol and which ones are not. But, and I've been learning this over the past couple of years, the re our research shows that it is the social availability of our youth that is the downfall. When asked where do you drink alcohol, 6% of Kentucky 12th graders said at a bar. 37% said at home. 64% said at parties, and 69% said at a friend's house. Mm -hmm. If an adult does not take responsibility or re reasonable steps to know what occurs and prevent it, such as ensuring adequate adult supervision with the party and not having alcohol readily available or accessible, then a social host ordinance holds them responsible. Legal penalties can be civil, such as having to pay the response costs of law enforcement and first responders, because that is pricey, <clears throat> and or criminal, making hosting an underage drinking party a violation or a misdemeanor. We propose a Class A misdemeanor and a fine of $250 or a fine of $250 as a penalty for first-time offense, $500 for second offense, and up to $1,000 for a third offense. <clears throat> uh, for a third offense or for sub subsequent uh, offenses with variances regarding imprisonment, fines, and both in response to recovery costs. The intent of the social host policy is simply this. To change community culture and conditions. To focus, to change the focus from the underrated from the underage drinker to the adult or enabler. We want to change that focus. To decrease provision, to decrease furnishing alcohol to an underage person, to change context and setting, and to deter underage drinking parties. For five years, well, it's been, Partners in Prevention has been here longer than five years, but I've been here, I've been with partners for five years. And for five years, we have sat around the table. We have spent our time and our lives for five years sitting around the table, baffled by our community's issues with drugs and alcohol. How do we help these children? But after about two years in this thing, we started looking around at each other and we started to see one of the big roots of the problem. We started to look at each other and say, it 
It's the parents. We need to target the parent, guardian, or neighbor. How can we show these kids? Because I'm in the schools all the time trying to do drug education and this and that. And then they tell me the environment they're going home to and that the things that we're trying to teach them to be safe and healthy are being condoned in the home or at friend's house. So <clears throat> that negates the very thing that we're trying to do. We know that there will never be a law because I, I wish we could just say that there would be a law where all parents and guardians must attend all the partners' town hall meetings on marijuana and alcohol <laughs> and get them there. That's our biggest problem right now. We can't get people to the table. You wow, know, we, right. we can't get people. The parents educate. I can hold students hostage all day long because they're in school. I got them for an hour. But we can't have laws that where we go in and we're like, we think you need an assessment, ma'am. Not you, but you know. We think you need an assessment, you need to go get one. By the way, you can't make somebody do that. You can't make somebody get help. You can't make somebody uh, not condone what they're doing. But a social, a social host ordinance is one of the few things because there are few, if not the only thing, actually, I've been thinking, that we can do to affect change in our environment. Please, 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 for the love of God, support us in this endeavor. We've worked really hard on this. We play devil's advocate every question that you might have. I hope that one of us will have an answer for it. We've made a few changes where we feel like we won't have um, as much resistance about this. Uh, please take a stand with us in keeping the youth of Bullet County safe and our adults held accountable who are not responsible property owners. I heard a quote that sums up the true essence of a social host ordinance. It says, holding you solely responsible for underage drinking is like holding a fish responsible for dying in a poison stream. Uh, Again, thank you for your time and consideration in this matter. Before we take any questions, if there are any, there are a couple things that I would like to do. First of all, all those who came here in support of a social host ordinance, would you guys please stand? And if you're already standing, raise your hand, please. We have several of our students that are hosts here in the room, but they're presidents and candidates. Well, will you introduce themselves? Yes. Students? Um, we have the wall three. Paul, there we have. Isaac Mitchell. I'm Philip Harris. Sorry. 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 For being here very much. I mean, I can't even, there's no words to express the thankfulness and the gratitude that I have. I really appreciate it. Um, and secondly, I would like to introduce to you a young girl who has become a dear friend and an inspiration to myself. She's 17 years old. She's an upcoming senior at Bull East High School. When I talk to her, about what's really going on, I get a lot of my, I, I get a lot from her, okay, let's just say that. When I talk to her, it makes me want to take my kids and lock them up until they're in their twenties. <laughs> my jaw drops, and I've seen it all, and my jaw is still dropping. I'm like, what? Are you serious? I don't know if it's because I'm getting older and I've forgotten her, what? But uh, she is very important in this. When, um, there's some scary stuff out there, and we want uh, you to get a perspective because we're not, as much as we're, as much as Jamie is in the school on a daily basis, as much as I talk to the kids personally all the time, we are not in high school. We do not, we, we can't even fathom the extent of this problem right now. It's pretty bad. So, Jessica, if you would come up, uh, come on up here. And uh, I'm going to just take a couple of minutes and 
ask you a couple of questions. First of all, I want to know uh, it. I want to know how easy is it for you to have access to alcohol? For me to get alcohol would be very, very, very easy. All it takes is for me to get open up my phone, go through my contacts, figure out who I want to call, ask them if they know anybody that can supply me alcohol, or I can even get on Facebook and figure out the next party that's going to come up. Okay. And if you were going to get drunk tonight or drink, where would you go? I would go to a friend's house. Hey, let me just tell y'all, I know this seems scripted. We did meet earlier today and discuss this, but I did not have to ask her to say anything. I just wanted, I told her, as a matter of fact, I told her, I said, just speak from your heart. Let us know how what's really going on out there. Um, so, you go to a friend's house. Is that because, okay, let's give an instance, okay? Tell us about, tell us about the other night. This happened okay. a couple of nights ago, okay? <laughs> okay, um, a couple of nights ago, I went to pick up a couple of my friends at their house to go to the aunt car. Um, they decided to get alcohol out of the refrigerator and drink before the mom car. Um, the person that held the bomb car, her parents are very, very strict parents. So she was lucky to even have a bomb car. Um, at the house, the mother walked into the kitchen and asked if it was okay to have alcohol at the party. And they said no, that they were going to drink it at the house, and plus I wasn't going to allow it in my car. <laughs> Um, so when I got to the bonfire, someone decided that they were going to start rolling a lunch. And it made me very uncomfortable. So I pulled the person that was um, holding the bonfire. Um, I pulled her to the side and I asked her if she knew what they were doing. And she said that she did and that she didn't care. And I told her that I felt very uncomfortable. And um, after, it was like a couple minutes just after that happened, my mom had called me. She asked me if I was okay, and I said no. I told her that I felt uncomfortable being at the bonfire, and she said to me that she just told my friends that I could come home, but I needed to come home. So um, her parents came out and stepped onto the porch to see what we were doing, but she didn't walk over to the bonfire to see if they're if everything was all right and nothing bad was going on. So technically there wasn't any supervision to see if there were drugs there. Um, not only was there alcohol, but there was weed, there was acid. And <laughs> acid. At a high school get together. But there's, there's two things here. One, she was at the first location and the parent allowed them to. She was right there before they went to the bonfire. And two, there was adults at this party, but nobody went out to look and see what was going on. And that's a big problem for two reasons. One, you've got kids like her that are there. They're put in a very uncomfortable situation. Luckily, she's strong enough and has parent communication enough to be able to have a way out. But kids who don't, then they sometimes get into that pressure because they're the odd ones out. So we got parents have got to step up and be responsible for what's happening on their property and know what's happening on their property. How often do these drinking parties occur? All the time. Would you say once a week, every night? I say it kind of depends on the person you know. I mean, yeah, I can't say everybody drinks, but I know a very a lot of people that do. Anytime, anytime someone wants to, they'll ask someone else if they want to do it. Hi, and, and um, so uh, the next day, you got a phone call. Yes. And that's where the acid comes in. Because mm -hmm. they're still tripping the next day. And uh, called you for a ride yep. to go to a friend's house so the person could calm them down. Okay. Do you feel 
like uh, if 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 there was a social host ordinance in place, if parents or caregivers or adults knew, because if this if, when this gets passed, partners in prevention will take responsibility and make sure that the community knows about this, that they know up front if you do this, if you allow underage drinking on your property, then this is what will happen. Do you think that it would deter parents from hosting these parties? Because if there's parents that don't care if other teenagers or minors bring alcohol and give other their friends alcohol, I think that them having a fine or whatever other consequences there are, that would help out a lot. Because if, if I was an adult, and I didn't care if my kid or their teenage or you know their friends drank at my house, and the police came and you know made me pay a fine. I wouldn't want to have more parties in my house. And I know we have a lot of parents here. We're not fighting any saying every parent allows this. No, it's certainly we're we're all different kinds of circumstances. But it's protecting those of us who don't allow it when our kids go to somebody else's house because we don't know what other parents allow. <coughs> And sometimes you'd be surprised at what parents do allow these things to happen because they think it's okay or it's, a, it's just alcohol. Well, alcohol, we all need you know these other things. And in the long term, this ordinance is going to reduce our issues with people going on to other drugs. The earlier people start drinking, the higher their chances are having addiction issues. It's going to reduce our DUI problem because Ron has many underage people drinking and contribute to that problem and can contribute to people who later continue to abuse alcohol and drive. Um, it's got a lot of long-term effects that will only be positive for our community and it's going to protect our kids and our community. I, I want to take a minute and pledge the support of my office behind this as well. Uh, before I remained county attorney, I was a member of Partners in Prevention for many, many years. It was great to say uh, when the court did not go forward with social hosts and had an opportunity uh, a number of years ago. Um, this may sound minor and I know Chrissy said they may drink. They do drink, people. Okay, we see them every day in court, and it's deadly serious. Everybody is perfectly aware that we had a big recent buzz. It's been all over the newspaper. By the grace of God, the police got there in time, or one of those kids would have died from something called positional um, asphyxiation, okay, that most of us may not have ever even heard of. But basically, they were so drunk, they had their stuff wound up in a knot, that they were so Okay, um, it, it is it is that serious. Um, I don't. And I'm like Chrissy. I part of me is like, oh, you want the kids to come in your house and hang out here? Today. Well, what do I do when I got a group of parents that want to be their kids' friends, mm -hmm. and kids are dying as a result? Mm -hmm. um, it, it's serious. It's not like you're you know you're not letting me ride their bike down the road. These are drugs, hard hard drugs. Uh, there, a lot of these kids are past what we call the gateway drugs, which is marijuana and alcohol. And it's like Chris said, if you go to some of these meetings, it's, it's frightening. Uh, when I could have a four-year-old correct me on how to roll a crack pipe, we have problems. <laughs> okay? And I mean, that's happening. I'm, that's, I'm not making that up. Kids will show me this. If I want to go down to the people say, well, it's not constitutional, why you can't do this? But you know what? If I want to go down and somebody challenges something we've done, and it's to save the life of the kid, we'll go down there every day. And that's what I've talked to Chris about. You know, we believe in this. We believe in this law. I just need you all to tell me if you if you want to go forward with this. I've already met with these folks, and I'll, and I'll be happy to drive but I do want you to know that my office is prepared to stay behind it and force it in 150%. We are also going to take responsibility uh, in enforcement by doing a couple of different things. One is uh, making sure offering our law enforcement um, any training that they need about this, which wouldn't be in depth at all. I mean, you know. And then also, uh, uh, other people have like, made little books, because I go out with the officers to do this, and a lot of times I'll see it, you know, I think it's called a blue book or something, and I have to like look for the KRS or whatever. I'm going to have you a little pop.
pocket book or your cop car right there so you don't even, it's not going to be a burden to the police officer to have to put that down on paper is what I'm trying to say. I can tell you why we look up the car Well, there's so many of them. You should always do
and um, I hope that you might get some good from it. In pursuit of excellence, leadership is leading from the front. However, that does not mean the leader walks way out in front, but walks side by side with the team. When you can lead one, you will become the leader of many. When I opened my business in 1968 as a 30-year-old widow, single mom, a very special person gave me these words of admonition. When you can lead one, you will become the leader of many. I was a single mom at that time, frustrated, scared, and nobody would ever believe this, but a very timid woman. <coughs> But that same wise man, my father, who exhorted this challenging and terrifying statement to me, he said, a fish stinks from the head down. And as in many of the lessons my father taught me, I really thought I could have gone the rest of my life without hearing that. He went on to say, now sis, when there's trouble in the ranks, the buck stops at your desk. You sort out the hearsay, the gossip, and fact, and you never procrastinate. My father's definition for procrastination was planned avoidance. What are you really planning to avoid when you procrastinate? So backing up just a minute, sort out the hearsay, the gossip, and the fact, and you never procrastinate, and take immediate problem-solving methods, the best of which is everything, all-inclusive, must be on top of the table in front of God and everyone. An open agenda, open interaction, results in open resolution. Thus equating to moving out the conflict into proactivity. What does this have to do with the following content? Well, whether we're leading our families or a business, our county, or the nation, all of the above needs to take preeminence to bespeak the integrity of leadership. Happiness is something we create. The quest of our goals leads us by lifelong habits that are all that absolutely rule our lives. And oftentimes, sometimes those habits are literally shackles to our lifelong habits that hold us in their grip. The feeling of accomplishment will dictate whether we have peace or joy. Those two emotions and components of our well-being is the, re the direct result of a clear conscience. And I'm not naive enough to even think that we'll go to a grave with a clear conscience. Our life will be better, though, if we avoid poor decisions based on our immediate gratification. Our focus is to maintain integrity at all costs that will give us the great victory of attaining peace and joy and we will be comfortable in our own skin. On Thursday, April 18th of this year, after the We the People meeting held in McDonald's in the Lebanon Injunction, I went to a magistrate and I, I initiated a conversation indicating my great disappointment that I felt with our three silent magistrates. My concern most particularly was the budget for the support of the county attorney's office and the operation of that office. I reflected back on the PowerPoint budget presentation that was publicly presented and asked the magistrate for a yes or no to this question. Are you in favor of accepting the budget? He did not answer me. He changed the subject. He skirted the question. I further questioned why to the clandestine discussions held by the magistrates. I stated emphatically, you are voting for me and the people of the county, and we deserve to know how you stand. After all, we write your paycheck. You are elected and employed to represent the people. And what we are asking for, and most especially for the good of the of Bullitt County, your silence in public meetings denotes a hidden agenda. Holding public office should embrace an open agenda that is directed to we the people, not an agenda.
agenda that is only open behind closed doors and is power driven. The gentleman very defensively, not giving me a yes or answer, said, but there's a $43,000 of, of misappropriated funds. And I really gasped and I further went on to say that he was obligated to present that in a PowerPoint presentation to the public. I further questioned how he knew, and he indicated everyone knows about the 43,000. All of our question at this moment should be, who is everyone? He quickly changed his subject to say that he was not so much challenged with the county attorney <coughs> after talking about 43,000, as much as he was upset with the judge executive. With emphasis, he said that the judge executive wanted only women on the platform. And she was against any of the issues the male magistrates would represent. I alluded to the issue saying, if you have an issue with a co-worker and are carrying that against the issues, your vote helps to govern. There's something wrong with that picture. Difference with co-workers is not a part of your representation of we the people. Open encounter and problem solving does not come from the basis of gossip. It never gets resolved without mature conversation. Carrying all such statements in a gunny sack is a festering cancer that never brings a back about pro let me try again. A festering cancer that never brings about proactive leadership amongst those re you represent, who are we the people. The rock solid example of the above are these two statements. Everyone knows about the 43K. Judge <coughs> executive is against men. <coughs> he was very indicate, vocal to indicate that the three magistrates would, their vote would carry a lot of weight in assuring that the ladies did not get what they want or need for the good of the people. The great concern to me, and I am sure with you as well, that are present tonight, is what's happening. <coughs> At a different time, a different place, I had a conversation with another magistrate, and the conversation again was in reference to the county attorney and the budget, and that gentleman said to me, you really don't know everything. You really don't know what's contained in the budget. Well, I chose not to pursue any further into the conversation, except to speak my disappointment watching his progress since election. I have not seen the fruition of his many promises. The need for transparency needs to be predominantly stronger than the desire to power trip with three winning votes. The need for financial support of the budget has to go beyond the personal issues and be focused to the need of the people that the magistrates represent. It's not, all, it's not all about how powerful they are or how powerful they feel with their three votes. It is all about how efficiently the county attorney's office is managed in order for that operation to meet the legal needs of our community and keep that office properly staffed and financially supported to continue the attained success and catapult to even greater success. Hence, diminishing some of the present challenges of that office in our present day culture. It is wrong to make a statement about misappropriated funds without black and white bags. Transparency has no shades of gray. We the people demand black and white proof rather than idle gossip or false statements when seeking a direct answer from the men elected to represent we the people. Bringing this to your attention tonight comes from a personal drive within for the pursuit of excellence and the Bullitt County political representation for some 74,000 people of Bullitt County. For those who carry my vote and the vote of so many people, no less than excellence is what we expect and of course was promised while campaigning. I wish to present the same question to all of the magistrates tonight. Will you vote yes or no 
for the budget that's been presented. I humbly and carefully present, the, present these thoughts in hopes of challenging the awareness of many as we move forward to the approval of the needed means to attain our pursuit of excellence for we the people of Holy Cow. Thank you for your attention and thank you, Judge Executive, for the time to share my thoughts and my heart.
Because all the stuff that's going on, I think I will withdraw my comments to the next board meeting. I can't compete with all this. Okay. <laughs> okay. 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 All right, Scott, come on up and Uh, the motion is to amend the 
not the not treasury reports, your fiscal bill to strike payment to Constable Hudson for $250.67 per
So, do we want to protect your record? You know, we can you know, yeah, you know, Okay. <coughs> They literally can use it wherever they go. 
Um, they are drug recognition experts, which means the majority of our DUIs now are drug related. And if you have one of them, they can come in and testify as an expert witness. What was often hard for our county is we didn't have any. Uh, we either had to rely on KSP, which had one officer assigned to us, and he had to cover 13 counties. Or if you could track down somebody from a um, uh, motor vehicle, you could maybe get them. But the closest we had, I think, is in Bloomfield. So the Shelley got us the funding. It has not cost the taxpayers of our county one single dime. It's been paid for from the facility, um, from the state, and the sheriff's office sent Billy Allen, who's actually there, I think, right now, from Brooks, which I think Craig Brooks is from Brooks, too. <laughs> I thought that was nice that we sent Billy up there, and Billy will get to work with any here, any law enforcement agency that has a situation that they need a drug recognition expert. The sheriff's already pledged to send Billy out, and we will support the surrounding counties around us. So I thought that's actually a very big to do because we've never had anybody from the county certified and we didn't have to pay for it. We just had to pay for it. Anything else from anybody? I have something to say. Yes, ma'am. I don't understand why if someone says someone else took forty-three thousand dollars, why I can come forward and say where it went or where they think it went or whatever. We have dealt with this from the first time that I have been in office. We have always had to wait on the budgets until the gentleman get through with it, but we can see it. And I just think that it is time for the people to know <coughs> this stuff that's going on. And I think a lot of it, you know, I like these men as people. I have no problems with them. But I think it's a very bad thing that we're dealing with, and I've dealt with this since we first came on, and I've fussed about it since I first came on, that um, we are women, and it's like we don't have enough sense of being our own. We can't see the budget and make our changes and then let's down do it. It, it does not happen that way. It has to happen their way, and then we might have enough time to make changes. I have seen since what Miss Vivian has said. She's a very smart lady and what she said was everyone should listen to. Because this has definitely all been happening when it comes to women. And all the way down to the Actually, you really wine in the service. Okay. So it's, so it's 
just that small amount. It's not that a religious group could get a give everybody a bottle of wine and say we're having a religious. You know, I mean, you know, I, maybe it sounds funny, but I mean, if I want to do this, what, what does it mean? You know, your Catholic church is beer flows freely. So is there people with uh, government uh, bought the people there to watch over that?